back on the shore. Bless it. Oh, this working bit of kit I've got, I reckon. Wonderful bit of kit. So, we've got a bit of box section, and what we're doing that for is, is the third piece of the puzzle. Yeah, the fourth, really. So, we've got the headstock in place. We know that's got to be where it is to give us the rake that we want and the ground clearance that we want and the gap from the front of the motor to the front end of the bike and all that, that geometry. We've got the rubber mounts in place. And they're spragged up, this bit of framework, spragged up, look, can't go anywhere. Bolted up, bolted to the engine. Happy days with the slugs in. We've got those snuff boxes, as they are now known. Thank you, everybody. I agree. And they're plumbed up level, and we uh, drop down from here and measure from the back of the jig to make sure they're all true. Um, that upright was set using the factory swing arm, so we know we're good as far as that goes, the length goes. What I'm going to do now is place that bit of box section, if I can get it out of the fucking saw in one, with one hand. Give this a, a quick clean up, and then that is going to go in the middle there a bit like that and our frame rails are going to run either side of it like that so we need to give ourselves a bit of room and we're going to then we can bring off our uprights from somewhere around here you know it gives us a, a, a strong point a platform if you will to come back and up to these and to put uprights that are going to join onto the seat rails that aren't in, in there anymore they're not in there at the minute so we're going to go up we're going to put some uprights that catch the seat rails that go down to the axle plates yeah right now that's tacked in um these width of these rails are determined by the front mounts that we're using so we've got that sorted and we know that we need two bits of tube 21 and a half inches long and they're going to fill that span they're going to go to here sorry go to about midway on this box um, and then the rear rails will come down and kick across to join up with them so two bits of tube there she is 21 and a half inches long. So there you go, there's your rails, and they are from rails, isn't they? Which is, um, proper emulates the stock frame for just, if we come along and ignore the bog drive, as I used to sing. The bottom rails are fucking rails, they're too like rails, you know. Because of the shape of the bottom of the motor and the sump. They have a, it's not actually a sump, they have the oil tank underneath the back of the gearbox which frees me up, loads of space here for the bits and bobs. Those rails are now in. Uh, I've not tacked them in because I need to look at these front tubes, these pull back, the tubes that run from this engine mount up to the bottom of the headstock is next on the agenda. And I want to see how well I can fix them to these stubby bits, you know. Uh, you might think good enough for Harley Davidson, good enough for me, but I'm afraid that's not the fucking case. So I'm going to cut some tube and have an offer up and see what's what. So I'm not happy. I'm happy with the rails. You know, they're going to fit lovely. Bit of tube from there up to there. But I'm not happy with this fucking fuck all of a knob. So I'm going to drill it out to um, the largest size I'm comfortable drilling by hand, which will be, I don't know, fucking whatever size. And I'm gonna make a slug that fits in the hole that I've drilled and fits in the tube that I'm fitting. So we can actually like fucking slug it like we have the bottoms. So we'll be proper beefcake when we get that in there. I'm just gonna struggle on, get the old Black & Decker sweating for a bit. Uh, 
right, I'm back to the good old trusty bandsaw to cut a couple of raw slugs to make those, uh, well, slugs, <laughs> three inches long. We ended up drilling the holes out 16 millimeters, which I tried to uh, video, but it might not look good. I think I think you got a good shot of the CT90, to be fair, but I'll include it. So we're going to make a couple of stepped slugs that fit inside the frame tube and have a, a protrusion that goes inside of those so we can make for a good join. Get these cut off and get them onto the lathe. Okay guys, so we're back on the lathe. We've cut those slugs and we need to machine this down to fit inside the tube. So I'm just going to take a, a, a clean up pass. Just go down until we get an uninterrupted cut, which is not quite there. A little bit more, please. There we go. We'll see what size that is. We're aiming for 17.3, sorry, 27.3, fuck me. And we've got 28.78, so we'll set out on the DRO. Uh, X is 28. Point seven eight enter and now we'll take it down to 27.3 because it'll do that in one cup sorry 27.2 ignore me numbers my mouth's not behaving itself this morning it's shitting cold in here though so maybe that's got something to do with it don't know. I've got a feeling I can fucking see it. This has been pushed back. It's not fucking tight, Ralphie. Naughty, naughty. We use a persuader look just to tweak it. Carry on. Make sure that there we go. It's going to run off a little bit because it's moving in the chuck. But it's alright. It's only a slug, no one's ever going to see it, we're not worried about finish, we're just worried that it's going to fit where we need it to fit, that's what we're concerned with. So, we'll take this down to 27.2, as near as fuck it is to swearing. We spin round, back them in, just on the end, zero, and now we need 10 millimetres down to be 16 millimetres in diameter, so. Okay, give yourselves a nice cut. So, this is 19 this needs to be. Like I say, I don't know what's wrong with my mouth and my numbers, I've got them straight in my head. So, take another cut. And I'll keep chipping away at it. And join you when we're near with the size again. And now we're on a final pass down to 16 millimeters. So we'll get that put down. As I say, we're not worried about the finish, although it's not too shabby to be fair. And snug that up. Now we need to change out to a chamfering tool give yourselves a nice clear shampoo on the bottom and a nice bit of well prep on this end happy days so that's that end done I'm gonna spin it around if it's fucking hot really fucking hot unsurprisingly so well Fucking undo it, spin it around. Ow, ow, ow. Hold it in that bit there, which is probably should have gone a bit further down when we cut, but you know, in home. Um, machine this down to 27.2. So Drop that tool out. Put this one back in. Put 
they're making some chips. So, two in two, because we're not holding on too much. And again, you can join me when we're finishing off the size. And now we're just coming up to finishing the, the final sized cut. Cooking. The bits, it's freezing in here, and the, the swat's coming off blue. Swat off. Red off. Uh, stick to your spectacles. I've got it. There we go. Um, so it will ring up. So. Quick chamfer. Ooh, a bit tall in the old and white right there. Do. Now what I'm going to do is counter bore this end about 45 mil long, uh, deep, just so that we're not trying to weld into a fucking solid cold lump of shit like we've got. It can get us a more penetration. It's all about the penetration, eh? Hey boys. Speaking of which, give me a lube on that. So, get a pilot drill in there. Like so. Actually, it's a centre drill, not a pilot drill. Pilot drill guides. That's just a centre drill, but it's chamfered to take a, a ground centre to support. We use them as pilot drills, really. Um, and I'm going to take this 45 mil down with this 10 mil bit, like so. I'll slow things down a bit and open that out. Bear with, I might change my bits off camera. Give that an open out. Like so. And that's that done. Get that shit out of the way. Break that edge. Break that edge a bit better. Not, no one's ever going to see it. Oh, to be fair. Just, we know it's there, don't we? So, that is going to be really tricky to get out of here with. Oh, there we go. So, there's one slug. Red art. It's fucking red art. So, we'll make another one the same. And uh, that means that we can then look at fitting those front rails, those front uprights. Sorted. So that's those slugger dugger doodars made. Yeah, now we can get on with these top tubes. I've already uh, done one, but what I do is I'll throw it up, and you can see that to follow the angle of this, you need to slice that corner off, and you need to slice that corner off. So I'll give myself a couple of marks, get the old chop saw out. Start trimming and trying and trimming and trying, trimming and trying until we've removed every bit that we need to remove. And then we have a tube that fits with just a nice little gap around it for the MIG. Perfect. See the slugs tucked up there in the bottom, we'll get that weld up. And all of that is going to be built up with weld. So. That's going to sit, oh, might stay there actually, it will. That's going to sit like that, look, that's the very beginnings of the frame, those two rails, although neither of them are actually where they're going to end up with a pair, near enough, near enough as fuck it is to swear in. So we're starting to get the cradle in, which is happy days. So, after much fettling and fucking about, We've got the, uh, this side done as well, so we've tacked up there, good stitch on there. Good stitch in there that you can't see, really. And there, slugs welded to the casting. 
frames welded to the slug given a fresh start I say that I might make that gap smaller but I need to get in there to do the welding and once it's all done it'll be gleaming I mean it goes on to a casting so no worries and the same on the head stock Facebook focus focus there you go so next up's the top tube um, and the brace from the top tube this maybe this one not sure but that's the cradle done so backboneitis like scoliosis I'm back right here's your length of your backbone it's a long bastard because we've got a long bite so I trim that off and I know without even fucking looking that I need a little scallop to go around the top cup on the bearing on the top uh, head stop bearing and then with the help of the mighty Thor well it's a mini Thor I think it's number two or number one uh, third hand got me third hand out look top tube same same fucking thing mark it up trim it I'm not going for a kick in the fucking tube because I need clearance for the rubber mounts there's loads at the back it's only going to nod we're having a pivot there which will take a little bit of engineering um, but we're on a bit of room around the motor and I've got scope for it you know we can we can drop the seat rails down a, a, a little bit from there and it won't hurt at all not one fucking bit so next is probably going to be this brace because uh, I don't like doing them because it's such a fucking long cut to get them to blend into the backbone but we'll get on I'll get on with that I'm going to have a brew I'll go have a brew do that I'll spare you watching me cut and trim you've seen me do it enough in my videos it's just me using these tools and that cut off saw and that fucking band saw so I'll I'll get a bit of fucking inch and a quarter probably longer than that oh I don't know yeah longer than that out of me uh, use again bin there you go there's a bit well, I don't know no it's got some chewed up bits on it can't use that okay I'll get a new bit off the fucking shelf then will not I and uh, cut that in after me brew and then it just leaves the, the arse end of the frame really you know I'm, I'm really fucking tempted to put inch for supports I've got to get off this here somehow because these are adjustable on the stocker and it needs bracing on the edge steady if you like um, but it still needs to nod on them fucking rubber mounts so yeah I might put inch in there nah fuck it inch and a quarter chunky monkey happy days and there we have that another tack of sin places try and get it in shot there you go it's all right isn't it um next up is the tubes uh seat tubes <coughs> that's all that's left really pretty much apart from the rear mounts and braces and everything else fucking hell uh, i get asked a lot about this ship here's what i do i gauge from experience i know that the seat rail that goes on here starts to bend about eight inches which is there look then i measure back to where i want it on here and come over to my bench where I've got my JD squared manual bender that I need to change up to inch and a quarter for this fat tubing um, and I want a note you know I want it three 33 inches bend starts at eight and I'm guessing guesstimated 40 degrees so what I'll do I'll go and cut a couple of bits of tube mark them I degrease them Mark them at eight inches, set that eight inches in the uh, bender and bend until we're at 40 degrees and have a look. So that's what I'll do. So we've got a bit of tube with the eight inch marks off. Yep. And we fit it in our bender. We line that mark up. Come on, 
there, 8 inch. Right, we'll make sure that our indicator here is set on zero. There we go. Zero. Tighten the bolt up there. That's all bending basically, which involves a bit of elbow fucking grease. This is the thickest tube that I've been. And you can quickly tell. If I did anything thicker, then I'd be looking at hydraulic um, 35 ish. I know 45 is as far as I can go without having to reset my form tool. So it's just looking 40, but it's just coming back. That's just under 40, so we'll have that out. It's not, this is not the um, part of the process I really relish. It's fucking hard work. Bending that, that's my back. There you go, there's one seat rail. We'll offer it up, check the angle of the dangle, and uh, trim it to suit you if we need to. Hey, so, seat rails are in. Uh, top braces in, cradles in. There's a few braces to go now. Not bibs and braces, but braces. So as I've said, we need to uh, make a mountain for this somewhere wherever it comes and maybe brace across it. We need to put the bottom bottom frame rails in. Yep, yeah. and we need to put cross cross braces in. Well, this cross brace, that one's about right for the rear mug guard. And then we need to look at that rear engine mount. We need to make up something there with some brass or bronze bush or something. The original one has fuck all, just has the uh, swing arm bolted to it with some like aluminium top hat cap things that give it a bit of rotation. So uh, we don't need to worry about putting needle rollers in there or anything. But it would be nice if we can make it in a way that allows it to boingy boingy a bit ain't it right that's smoking smoking dictates that the frame rails are in we've done the bottom rails we've done a brace there we've welded these plugs up best we can we're on the bench uh, next on the agenda we need to address that rear engine mount so i'm going to make some brackets or bosses or plates or something and we're going to catch that and then we're going to fucking join the top to the bottom either with some side rails and pull out a bit some side rails that do this catch it like which is kind of what does ask for or something else so we're very very nearly there Okay, so we're back at the shop door. I'll leave that to do its thing. Using uh, a bit of box action. And what we've done, I know you're watching these dads. This fucking rail here, three times I've done this. Look at the fucking what time. I don't know if it's, it's a fucking nine o'clock this morning. I started. Fuck me. I ain't done another. Road King, no mate. Anyway, enough for the run. So, we have got the rear rails in for the third fucking time. And they are beefed up to fuck. Move the debris out of the way. Yeah, nice bit of box. We're going to put a box, a bit of box section across here now. Which was the bit that's just cutting in the saw. And from there, we're going to mount the rear engine mounts. That's it. Happy fucking days. Right, hallelujah, brothers and sisters. That's it, framework's done. Well, the tube work is done. I might, I might, I might, I might, I might beef this out a bit with a bit, a couple of gussets or something. I probably will. Just to tie it all in, pardon me. Just some coffee. Um, we have now got uh, this situation, so. We need to tie in with this. 
and I think the best way I can do it <coughs> is make some brass bushings or similar. Similarly, what have I got? I've got plenty of stainless. I could do a nice bit of stainless actually. That'd work. Copper, bit soft. Brass. Let's have a look. See if this is uh, sizable enough. Ooh, full of any just. I'll make a couple of brass top outs out of that. I'll go in there. There. Camera, focus. Focus for fuck's sake. And then a the spindle goes through. I've got enough room to have a knot on the end. And the other side's fucking happy days. I could do what I like. So maybe a plate this side. And then that one on bolts. I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll do a fixed plate on this side. Yeah. Could even be threaded, couldn't it? Make it out of ten mil plate. Could be threaded or have a boss welded on it. That'd be even better. Uh, and then this side, another plate, but with two fixings on here, or I don't know there, and it wraps around. Probably. That sounds more like it. So yeah, sorted. Right, quick change of plan. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make clean this up, so whatever it comes to outside 30 mil, say, um, it's fine. I'm going to make two slugs, 20 mil long, and now I'm going to have a 19 mil hole in the middle because what I'm going to do is use. I've got a bit of a. I'm going to use a bit of ENA as a rear spindle. I'm going to put an M16 thread each end and it's going to pass through there and pass through the back of the gearbox and be held securely permanently fixed one end so that you can take a bolt out and the other end will unbolt and fuck off out of the way so you can get the lump out of it so I need two bits of this cleaned up with a 20mm hole through um, sorry 19mm hole through 20mm deep so let's get on so we touch on and we'll just take a very slight cut just a quick clean up, see how that goes. It's not clean, is it? Not enough. Not enough for our kid. A bit more then. Another half a mil. See how that goes. I think that's got it. I don't know, you know. No, it's still a fucking bit. Alright, another fucking bit then. See how that goes. There we go. So, quick clean up, bit of lube, you know what we say. And now 29 millimeters on the old DRO, I'll zero it actually, because it don't matter. Are we down at that? Uh, we'll get center in the end. Get a loop on there. And we'll switch that out to my pilot drill. There it is like so and we now we need 40 millimeters of slugs plus two potting tool thicknesses that's 46 so we need to do this out to at least 46 we'll go a couple of mil over i think go to 48 you can join me when i'm nearly there all right that's 40 so i'll pull it out without winding the handle clear the chips Slide it back until it touches on, and we know we're still good at 40. So, what do we say? 48, 2, 4, 6, 8. Happy days. I'll switch that out now to 19mm because uh, we don't need a ring doll. You know, it's an engine mount, so I'm sure 19mm drill will be absolutely fine. Okay, so we slow things down a little bit. Found a 19mm fucking drill. 
three quarters. And a nice slip. And I think once that gets in his happy spot. Right. A bit, a bit screechy, scratchy, but give it a bit of lube. Now it's doing a full cut, and I'll take that out to the bottom of the hill. Right, that just leaves a part off, so we'll touch on. It doesn't just leave a part off, does it? No. Um, what did we say? We only 20 plus the tool is 23. So we'll get that at 23. There. And we'll break that edge. And we'll break that fucking edge. No. Uh, now we'll start a cut. And we'll break that edge. Once I get enough to go up, that I'll break that edge. Have happy days. That's one, two. What I've done, I've not cleaned it up enough. Look. I've not had enough sticking out to get the full 40 mil. Fuck now, that's all. So. I'll just repeat that for the other one. I'll just rescue that, the old one. Oh, there we go. There's one with a burr that we need to remove. It's no, dip, no big deal. I'll do a clean up on that and get that parted off just like you've seen me do.